What up, tubers? Welcome to another How To with Mr. L. So the goal for today is to create a portrait that resembles that of a person that did the makeup for themselves as Day of the Dead. Here's my example. It's kind of like what we're shooting for. But for today's example, I'm not actually going to use one of my fellow staffers on campus. I'm actually creating a new doc. So Command N. I'm going to set it to paper. If you guys didn't know, Day of the Dead is kind of a Hispanic, Central American culture. Good to know, right? Little facts. Um, it's usually celebrated on the 1st and 2nd of November. It's a celebration of life. So I already decided what photo I'm going to use. So I'm going to press Command V as in vector. And I should get the, I should get Loki or Tom Hiddleston or one of Taylor Swift's many X's. So I'm going to hold Option Shift, increase the size of the picture. Uh, make sure it fits the canvas according to what I want to work with. Because ideally, I want to work on his pretty face. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Hey, how's it going? I'm Tom Hiddleston. I'm Loki. So let's hit enter and let's get started with this. So as Photoshop thinks about what we're going to do next, I'm going to create a new layer. Uh, what I like to do with this new layer is I'm going to press the letter L, activate the lasso tool. Um, and for this demonstration, yes, I'm in Photoshop 6. I'm using a Cintiq tablet, so the pen makes it easier for me to create this selection. And I'm just going to leave the ears because if you ever do the research and look up, the day of the dead portraits, most people don't paint their ears. They just leave them as is. Like, hey, look, what the, huh? Yeah, it, it's normal. So I select Loki's face. Hey, well, why the heck did I select his ear? So I'm gonna hold a option to remove my selection. And ta-da, get some of this hair out of the way. Uh, press shift to create and add to this selection. And then we'll go from there. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick like a white color. I'm not gonna pick like a white color. I'm actually gonna pick white. And I'm gonna press option delete to drop the color on Tom Hiddleston's face. So now we see no face. I know everyone likes staring at his face. Here, there you go. Look at it again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press command D to turn off my selection, my dancing ants. I'm gonna double click on my layer to go into my layer styles. The reason I'm doing this is because now I wanna play with my blending modes. The blending modes allow me to adjust the strength of the white on his face. So it kind of gives him that ghostly effect also, when people paint themselves Day of the Dead, their face does turn white and then they accentuate certain areas of the face. Um, too white, way too white. Now he's glowing. Uh, so well then we, you know, we adjust it accordingly. If I go color, he turns gray. Um, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> gray with skin colored ears. It's like a weird Smurf. So, so go back to soft light. Uh, I'll keep it like that for now. Um, what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a kind of a step back, go back to the picture itself. I'm going to press the command J. I'm going to duplicate it. So in case I mess up on this picture, I have a backup. And I'm going to go to my burn tool. My burn tool is this little hand right here. Don't ask me why Photoshop thought the burn tool should be a little grasping hand. I don't know. It's just, it is what it is. So with my burn tool active, I usually adjust the exposure. By default, Photoshop has this at a 50. So I lowered it to about 24 and you know, it's all preference. And I'm gonna burn around his eyes and some of his features so that I can create those features a little bit better when I actually start to paint them in. And this definitely helps out considering one, it helps create the skull-like features that we have. And it comes in handy knowing where these things are because of my background as an artist. Um, taking those figure drawing classes and learning about anatomy and how the skull works. I actually had a teacher who made me trace out the human skull like over and over and over again. So I knew how everything worked out. So hence why like whenever I do a zombie or in this case, this scenario, I know exactly where the cheekbones and how they work and how they shape out. So if I turn off the white, you got dark, which it helps because eventually as I start doing the other parts of the, the project, it helps with the, the colorization and, and the process. So cool thing about coming in with this project is you kind of want to have an idea of what your design is going to be, how you're going to paint this guy. So for that purpose, I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to label it design. And I'm going to go turn on my brush. And now comes the painting aspect about it. Um, I could easily just use a lasso tool, shape out his eyes, Press D to reset my colors down here and then do an option delete and make it black. The only problem is now he looks like a pirate. Darrr! And that's not the goal. So I'm gonna do a Command Z and then Command D. The goal is to paint on the concept of 
the day of the dead, just as if we were doing our own makeup. So I'm gonna activate my brush tool. Uh, and this is usually how I do my sketches as well. So I'll get my brush, I'll have my dynamics on my pen pressure pad, which is the same settings whether you have a Cintiq or one of the other Wacom tablets, whether it's a Bamboo or one of the many they have. Um, I'm gonna turn on my transfer so it kind of gives me a fade and it's all pen pressure. So I'll put that bad boy away. I'll increase my brush size for this. And then I'll start painting in the, the design I'm going to go for. And it's, right now my brush is at a, at a 30%. If I press five on my keyboard, it goes up to 50. The numbers actually along the keyboard will adjust the opacity on your brush and your eraser as you're using it. So I'm gonna hit zero to go to a hundo. Keep it 100. So I'm gonna just color it in. Now, when it comes to painting, right here is gonna be your favorite key to use as you're painting. I'm gonna hold option. Option allows me to sample my color. You saw that little window that popped up when I click? I'm sampling the color so I can blend these in better. Because now we're actually painting. We want it to look like we did our makeup. Like it's an actual creation. Not just plah, and then he looks like a pirate again. So the goal is to hold option, sample our colors, and repeat the process. So it gets a nice looking blend. Brought this color right here, let's go over the eye. And as you guys see, you know, this isn't usually my 15 minutes or less how to. This one's a little bit more intense because we are painting. This takes a little bit more time. For the sake of this, I just might do half the face and go from there. Remember, uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section and we'll go from there. Uh, subscribe, like, tell a friend. Tell a friend. The more friends we have, the more fun this is. And the goal is to make this fun. So. You know, there we go, kind of did that little part. Uh, get my brush going again. I'm gonna come over here and paint a little design. Link it to his mouth. And then I'm about to get really weird with Photoshop. I'm gonna press the letter R. R allows you to rotate your canvas. Now this is only possible if you have a graphics card that can handle it. If you don't have the graphics card, guess what? <laughs> you can't rotate. So, we'll press the letter B. I'm gonna co press Command Plus to zoom in. And let's start working on Loki's mouth. Or Tom Hiddleston, if you wanna be actually correct. Make my brush smaller. Let that line shows up darker. And it's all pen pressure, right? So, it gives off that painterly effect. I might even come back afterwards and paint in some more white to accentuate some of the parts. But by during the, doing the burn process on it, it helped out a little bit. Actually, let me erase this right here. And usually when I'm working on this project, I keep my eraser at a soft edge, so it helps me with the blend. And I adjust the opacity as well, so it's not superly strong. So right now I have it at a 40, and I just increase my brush size a little bit. And if you guys notice, Day of the Dead, usually some of these people do some pretty intricate designs. Uh, but it's all preference, it's all really user preference. So let me set my brush back on, I'm gonna press D to reset my colors down here. And I start painting again. And like I said, it's all about getting those blends in and sampling colors. So I'm gonna increase my brush size, since my transfer's on, and I brush, you can see that the brush isn't full black, so I can actually sample, holding option, and paint it in. And that's kind of the whole process of this. Um, as we get through it, it'll actually turn out to look pretty, pretty darn clean. And we can accentuate certain areas more. Um, turn on my eraser by pressing the letter E, and erase what I don't want. Like I said, I'm gonna only do half of his face for the sake of the demonstration. Um, I can even go back and delete half the white, so half of them is normal, half of them is Day of the Dead. Um, but it's all about you know understanding the intricacies and coming up with a like a pre-design first. Knowing what you're gonna sketch in first comes in handy. So you're not kind of like, uh, what did I just do? You want it to look pretty legit. You want it to have a purpose and look pretty darn authentic, like these people do it to themselves. So in a sense, you can say we're digitally doing makeup. If you ever want to know what you look like with makeup, here you go. Try this. Uh, so let's see what else. 
press R to rotate again. I'm just hit escape now that my rotate tool is active to set them back up to normal. Turn my brush back on. Uh, just give them a little cross. Press the letter E so I can erase some of it. And then again, remember my eraser, my brush is at a 40%, so it's not gonna give me a full erase. Uh, we wanna make it look like it's actually makeup done. And oops, mistakes happen all the way live. So let's see, I like this curvature right here. So let's add a design here. In a sense, the curvature right here kind of goes with the structure of his skull. So let's just roll with it, see what happens. Turn on my eraser because I overdid it. Make my brush a little bit smaller so I can get a little bit more intricate. Put my eraser back on, pressing the letter E. So if you get the grasp of your keyboard shortcuts, obviously it makes it a lot easier than having to go click, click. Uh, so get to know those keyboard shortcuts and as I talk about them, you know, I tell you what they are and I'll show them on screen. Um, like I think down here we could probably use a little bit more white to make it stand out more. Um, I can even apply color. So say I get this red right here, you want to do these little red circles around his face. Because it's not always just black and white. Apply these little intricate colors. If I go over it again, same concept. Now I'm going to start painting them in with a little bit more detail. Understanding that here's his cheekbone, so I kind of want to make it look like it's conforming to his face. I can come in and start painting and sampling the color, holding option. So it starts to give me more of that realistic look. There we go, there we go. It's pretty, you know, in a sense, I wanna say it's pretty basic, but one again, I kinda know what I'm doing, so I'm trying to show you what to do. Um, need that red again, cause it gave me some skin tone color that I'm painting with. And even as it looks now, it kind of gives off the appearance that Loki did get his makeup done. Kind of, sort of. If I go into the black, no big deal. Sample the black color, paint it out. Press D to get my black. Get this guy going here. Actually, let's go the other way. Because I'm only doing half. And then become best friends with these option, with the option keys to sample the color. And we create that blend. Because we can tell from the photo itself where the highlights are. So we can kind of base our design, our shadows, and our highlights based off the photo itself and what we've created. So whatever I don't want, I'll press the letter E so I can start erasing, blending in a little bit more. Like I said, I'm only going to do half of this space. Oh, and a quick sense, this is how you'd create your Day of the Dead portrait. So that eventually, it looks like my staff member here. And if you look at my layers on this one, I added an extra layer of white. I have his white face, uh, but I did add an extra layer of white. I did do the burn tool to him, just like I did to our Tom Hiddleston. Um, and if I wanted to, I could come back in and burn a little bit more to give him off, give off that feeling, those features, make those stand out a little bit more. So. Like I said, if you have any questions, comment below, like the video, tell a friend, reshare it, and see you on the next tube. Catch you all later.